the first. An actress who locked herself out of her hotel room naked and a singer serenading with his fly down. <laughs> Cindy Adams tells of celebrities' embarrassing moments when we come back. Still ahead, they get warrants for their arrest instead of buying dresses for the prom. Meet girls in gangs and the lessons they learn in violence. Unfortunately, those embarrassing moments that we wish that nobody ever saw. Well, believe it or not, even our picture-perfect celebrities have <laughs> moments they wish had happened to them only in private. But who then would know about those embarrassing moments, except for our own Cindy Adams. Madam Adams. Yes, Madam Adams. How are you? <laughs> okay, who, who did you dig up for us? Who, who, who's first? Well, I've just been checking with a lot of my friends to see if they ever screwed up anything. And a wonderful story, not so wonderful, but Sylvester Stallone calls me one day last year. He's making a movie out of prison in Rahway, New Jersey. And he says these are terrible people. They're killers, they're murderers, they're dope peddlers. Each one has killed fi five people, shot his mother, banged his father. Everything is terrible. But he forgets to tell me I shouldn't mention it in the column. Uh, what do so, I know? Of course so I write do. about it, of course. of course. Calls me two days later. He says, God, take it back. Fix it up because it's costing me $100,000 a, a day. And not only am I losing money, I may lose my life. They want to kill me, these people. Did they really? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know how to fix up. I just said, you killed his mother. You're a shoot. You're a <laughs> dove. You're a pig. You're a rat. You're a dog. You're a fool. What am I going to say? So I said, he's a murderer, but he's a very nice fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I did the best. Did it I help? Did. Yeah, it did. They they apologized to him and they said, "Hey, you got nice friends." Really? You know? Who? Oh, wait, before we move on to somebody, who's he seeing right now? You know, it's hard to keep up with him. Sylvester Stallone. He's still you know? seeing uh, Jennifer Flavin, the, the model. Oh, he is. That is. What time is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. So that could be over by over the time yet. this airs, right? He will be a senior yeah. citizen by then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Julio, Julio Iglesias. Right. Julio Iglesias yeah. is in Atlantic City, right. and he is singing passionate love songs to Raquel Welch, if you'll pardon the expression, and Liza Minnelli. And they are laughing. The audience is laughing. And he is down on his knees singing to them. And the audience is hysterical. And he gets an idea that there's something wrong. Why are they laughing? His zipper wasn't zippered. <laughs> so he figures, no, from Babaloo, they shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> and he looks down. He says, oh, right. So he stands up and he zips himself and the audience goes crazy and he says, oh, ah, man. you shouldn't laugh. It's really nothing. Yeah, he's such a professional. Why anybody would laugh if his zip I mean no, I wouldn't no, be laughing. Unless something no. was hang never mind. No. <laughs> never mind. I'm sorry I said Julio, that. I'm we sorry wouldn't I said be laughing. That. Yeah, no, yes. we wouldn't. We'd maybe be you, panting, not I, maybe. Yes. Is he yes. as much of a lover as we all want him to be? Yes, he is. Oh, he's he wonderful. Is. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. I think if he had as many ladies as he's supposed to have, he'd wind up in a bottle on the shelf in Harvard. Yeah. So I guess some of it has to be lying. But let's say if he's not really out there, he is rehearsing a hell of a lot. You is, know? Is he, why has he not made any movies? Cause What's he it got to really? do with what I'm talking well, about? Well, I don't here. know. I just want to know he why he made not one movie. He did? Was yes. it a bomb? Awful. The worst. Oh, he said he's not an actor. Terror. No. It looked oh. like he belonged in a prison with numbers across him. <laughs> he said he was just awful, and that's why he will never, never make again. another movie. Okay. Who else? Who else you got? Oh, uh, Jessica oh, Tandy. Yeah. Jessica Tandy went to uh, London to, what was the name of that big movie she got in? Uh, Driving Miss Davis. Driving Miss Davis. Yeah. She didn't have her lenses in, and she's asleep in a, in a hotel in London, and she doesn't know her way around, so she left a night light on. But she couldn't find her glasses, so she couldn't see the night light too well, and she follows what she thinks is a night light. And she's in her nightgown, which is diaphanous, and long white hair down to here. And she's 81 years old. And she follows the nightlight. The door closes behind her. She's in the hall outside with the elevator. And here she is with 81-year-old bones showing through the nightgown and the hair. And the very proper elevator man comes up. And he says, uh, Miss Tandy, uh, have you lost your way? She says, no, I haven't lost my way. I'm looking for a cab. Of course I lost my way. <laughs> I'm looking for a guy. Why? Anything what do you want else? from me? So she, he says, what can I do? She says, you can get me the key. So he went down and helped her and put her back inside her room. Oh Isn't that a lovely God. story? Milton Berle. Milton yes. Berle. Milton Berle was reminiscing not so long ago about what does it mean, you know, I've had success, I don't need it. All you really care about when you get to a certain age are your grandchildren. 
Uh, it means a lot to me to be with Jody and Johnny. Yes. So he comes home and his son says, gee, Dad, it was very touching what you said, except your grandchildren are not Jody and Johnny. They're Anna and Charlie. <laughs> he had totally forgotten the name of the kid. Are you kidding No, absolutely. But he was, he was waxing philosophical and he thought, ha, ah, what's the difference? Uh, what's what the their difference? names They are? got names yeah, for my who grandkids. Cares? Who cares? The most important thing is to get <laughs> the tears up. Yeah, exactly. Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush? Yeah. Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush, uh, the last time she tinted her hair, she used a rinse called Fabulous Fawn. And it was just a rinse, and they put her in a plane to Texas, and there was no air conditioning, and it was very warm. Oh, and no. the Fabulous Fawn started to run. It was running oh, down here. Yeah. It's so like Death in Venice. Remember that movie? No, I end? don't. Thank well, you. it's true. So you it's got it. nothing to do yes, with my it does. Story. It's similar. It's similar. Fine. Yes. So she's, it's running down her face. And she's using her handkerchief, and she runs out of the <laughs> handkerchief. So then they go into the <laughs> ladies' room in the, ca the can in the plane, and they start putting Kleenex. Now, the Kleenex, if your face is perspiring, it clots. It oh, sticks stop to it. it. It's the truth. Oh, no, it's I don't the believe truth. it. If I'm lying there, I never get on a better show. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> don't lot. So she's staying. <laughs> she's in the plane with clots of brown paper from the fabulous fawn. She is so nervous, they wipe her and they clean her up. The plane arrives, she, she is so nervous, she trips coming down the runway and falls right into the arms of the guy who's holding flowers for her. Oh and that, my. she says, is the last time she ever tinted her hair. Oh my God, well I gotta go to the audience because they have a couple of questions for you. I hope you don't embarrass me and you can answer these. But with you, who knows? Would you stand up, please? Go ahead, give her a hard one. Is it true that Michael Jackson is going to give away Elizabeth Taylor at her upcoming wedding? Well, somebody has to, yes. <laughs> There's um, no one left. Elizabeth Taylor, Hilton Wilding, Todd Fisher, Burton, Burton, Warner, Fortensky. Has a nice ring to it, hasn't it? Doesn't it? Anyway, it looks like he is going to, and they've changed the wedding from, from one day to the next because Nancy Reagan couldn't make it. Did you know that? That's the truth. Is that true? Absolutely. Nancy wouldn't change her date, so Elizabeth had nothing important. She changed hers. It was only really? a wedding. What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, there's been so many. Who cares? <laughs> Question. <laughs> Is Nicolette Sheridan from uh, Page on That's Landing really pregnant? Uh, I, be I believe that she is. Uh, the question is whether she will be staying with Harry Hamlin forever and ever and whether they will become senior citizens together. I don't really think so. Really? Yes, that oh. is my last piece so of So she'll raise the baby alone? If, yes, if, yeah. she, if she is pregnant. I believe she is. I well, she is. I, I love having there. you here, kid. Come back uh, next Tuesday. We'll Thank see you, you I will, my Thank darling. You. All right, everybody. Jerry. Next up, a 13-year-old girl wanted for armed robbery and a woman with jail time for attempted murder when she was just 18. It's not only for boys anymore. Girl gang members speak out when we come back. You know, the realities of gang warfare today involve a daily dance of death where early hopes, dreams, and young lives are shattered by a violent environment. Traditionally considered a male influence, now more than ever, young women are getting involved in gang warfare. I want you to meet Tanya. She's a member of the Venice Tresis in California. Tanya is only 13 years old. Now, she says she would like to go to college if she doesn't get shot first. Also joining us is Georgina, who has been a member of a tough East Los Angeles Chicano gang called Garrity Loma for 10 years now. She will be sentenced to jail come September for gang-related drug activity. She says she's almost lost her life three times, but keeps coming back for more. Also welcome youth counselor Marianne Diaz-Parton, a former gang member who at 18 years of age attempted to murder two people with a sawed-off shotgun. And this woman says, when someone is born into a specific neighborhood, the kid will have almost literally a hell of a time getting out of gang life. And she should know. Virginia Lopez lost two sons to gang violence. Since then, she has devoted all her time trying to prevent kids from entering gangs. And please welcome them all. Tanya, yeah. again, I want to 
I want to emphasize Ta Tanya's age, Thir 13, yeah. 13 years old. How and why did you get yourself involved in a gang? Well, um, my sister was from Venice, and going to the school and everything, there was just like all the kids were from Venice, and I just got into Venice. In, into this, this gang called mm -hmm. Venice Traces. Now, that stands for what? Venice 13. Well, what is the significance of that? There's no significance. It's a um, city, Venice. Right, I know that, but the 13, just, are there 13 members, it's, or? It's Sureños. Okay. What, what now uh, are the kinds of things that's, that, that you, you girls get involved with? I mean, are we talking violence? I mean, this isn't like a Tupperware party. Well, in all happening. gangs, there's violence, you know? Yeah. Well, t explain to us what you do. Well, um, go, go to other neighborhoods and maybe see, see a girl, hit them up, they were from, and start bombing or whatever. Start bombing? Uh-huh, start hitting them or whatever, you know, jump them. Yeah. What's, what's the worst thing you've done to someone else? Or what's the worst thing that someone's done to you? 